What's up, YouTube? Um, this is Jacob Serm. Are people like, where's the power of God at? Some people might say, where's the power of God at? Why don't we see miracles and this and that? Because um, you must believe. you got to believe in the people who, who are around you must believe for things to happen like that. God um, God works in uh, mysterious ways, and um, you you got to believe. You have to believe for it to come to pass, basically. Um, basically, um, if you go to a foreign country, a prophet is not without honor, save among his own country and among his own kin. Even when Jesus was among his own kin, he could do little miracles. He couldn't do many miracles because of their unbelief. So, when you're inside, America is a big country, okay? It's, um, you know I'm saying, There's, the United States of America is huge. Um, and you got to think, while we're in America, we're not going to be seeing too many miracles or doing too many miracles because the people around us are of little faith. They don't believe. But if we go to a foreign country and we go bear hundredfold fruit, there shall be many miracles. If you, if you believe in and you lay on the hands of the name of Jesus, you shall see the lame walk, the deaf, uh, the deaf hear, you know I'm saying, the deaf shall hear, the mute shall talk. The blind shall see, like literally flesh. I'm talking about their flesh. You know what I'm saying they shall be healed. Diseases, all manner of diseases, AIDS, uh, HIV, uh, herpes, whatever it may be, it can be healed in the name of Jesus. Also, it's good to um, take two or three people from uh, the elders from the church and then anoint somebody and pray over them. And they shall be healed of their sickness. It's written in the scripture. But power. There's power in the commandments of the Lord. Keeping the commandments of the Lord, there, there's power. Okay, it's not like, um, it, but it takes patience also. Because the wicked go out, right, they go out day and night, and they go out uh, trying to kill, steal, and destroy, so that they may gain earthly gains. There's power in the commandments of the Lord. To practice and keep the commands leads to extreme godliness. Because by the command, we know that the uh, commandments uh, of the Lord are spiritual. But um, since we're born of the Spirit, and once we accept the Christ, we have we have that, the sense of godliness that we are able to practice these. We know, of course, all have sinned, uh, all have sinned and fall short of the glory of God. But it's, it doesn't make it doesn't mean to, it doesn't make the law the law void. It doesn't make it void. I mean, it, as it says, if you practice basically when you practice commandments, you're going to be blessed because of it. If you break the commandments, you're going to end up. You know what I'm saying you're going to end up being punished for it. But um, if you uh, but God is merciful, and if you practice commandments, is is so. But we're not under the law. We're not going to be judged according to law because we believe. But while we're on this earth, keeping the commandments, we can be blessed. And if in breaking the commandments, you can get. You know what I'm saying you can. You will be punished for it. The practicing of the commandments brings blessing. Blessing means happiness. Blessing means um, having abundance of um, of uh, things that you need, um, food, and all kinds of things. Blessing is uh, good fortune, basically. Um, people get impatient and use wickedness to get uh, means of support of early uh, earthly needs. People get impatient to go rob and steal and do this stuff. But look how they're punished. They're put in jails, institutions. They suffer death. All because they go out and kill and destroy and do these things. Uh, the the, the uh, wages of sin is death, but the gift of God is eternal life in Christ Jesus. So, don't think, like, once one comes to repentance and they accept Christ, it's true repentance that the Lord likes and loves. He loves when someone comes to Him in purity of heart, repents, and then practices commandments, repents of their old ways, puts their old ways aside, and actually does, you know what I'm saying, what pleases the Lord. Many are still ignorant and they're still babes in the faith. The babes, that's why we're here, to give them the uh, pure milk of the uh, word. But there's also meat, okay? And meat is practicing the commandments, getting to know the whole scripture, getting to know what it means, understanding all, all scripture for what it is. Um, God, is not the author of a con uh, God is not the author of confusion, but he is the author of eternal life. Um, so... The devil may go out and try to destroy and deceive you and have you do this and that and say, okay, well, you're not under the law because you accepted Christ. Now go and do what you want. No. Uh, see, that's not what you're supposed to do. You don't do whatever you want. God wants us to love one another. Jesus said, if you love me, you will keep my commands. So that means literally keep the commandments. I mean, it's not hard. It's easy to love. It's easy. Uh, it's easy. To, it's easy to love. It's easy. It's easy to humble yourself. But pride, you know what I'm saying? Pride goes before destruction and a high spirit before fall. It's proven. Okay, um... Now, the whole thing about it is, um, but in practicing the commandments, in the practicing of the commandments, and putting them into uh, action, working them, um, exercises the love and brings great peace. Now, it uh, brings great peace. Um, if you know, if you got multitudes doing it, it brings great peace. But there's a lot of wickedness in the world, and people, you know what I'm saying? 
people to delight in wickedness rather than righteousness. Some people do. Some people delight in uh, trying to be like the Lord, like me. I try to, I try to, uh, I try to do as best I can. I'm not saying I'm perfect, but I try to do what I can because there's major blessings, and I feel the peace of God rest upon me. Um, you said, I, uh, my peace I give to you, not as the world gives, give I unto you, I meaning he gives you heavenly peace. Um, and the Lord's Prayer says, Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. In heaven, every in heaven, all holy angels and stuff, they listen, they do all the commandments of God. They love the Lord, and they do whatever he says. So, that's why, and the same thing, when it's heaven on earth, likewise, shall everybody do what the Lord says, the commandments. Um, even though we're under the new covenant, we're forgiven of our sins. That was the new. That's the new covenant. We're forgiven of our sins if we eat of uh, eat Christ's flesh and drink His blood. We have part with Him, and He forgives our sins. We're atoned for. But He doesn't want because remember He's going to say He's going to He's going to say to the workers of iniquity, "Depart from me, you workers of iniquity. I never knew you." So it's good to practice the commandments. God is merciful. Um. So now, um, now if mass amount of people practice the commandments and do what they're supposed to do. Even when Israel, <clears throat> like when David was, even when the Israelites did all what they were supposed to do, and they were uh, in right standing with God, God blessed them, and they they multiplied. Did you know what I'm saying? And they did, they, they had it well. But when they broke the commandments, God punished them. He ended up sending them to uh to Babylon and the ex from the exile to Babylon. And but God still loved and showed compassion and mercy. He said, if you go to Babylon, you it'll be well with you. Um, it's why Jeremiah was prophesying and stuff like that. Um. So now, but remember, Daniel went to Babylon, he was well off, and he was well taken care of. Um, so God, in, in the times, he shows mercy, but at the same time, at the same time, God was not going to, uh, he, he's going to punish Babylon for doing what they did to uh, Israel. He wasn't just going to let that slide. Israel is his chosen people. You know what I'm saying? He loves Israel, and, and he wasn't going to just let them do that to his people, for, you know what I'm saying? Without cause, he's going to he punish, he's, he punish Babylon. Um... And um, you're saying basically he's going to punish Babylon. It's going to be forever. Um, so now, um, now when mass amounts of people practice the commandments and are in unison in, in embodying Christ in love and not letting pride get to them and saying, "Oh, I'm better than you," and this and that, then it's well off. But many people are proud and arrogant, and they and they say, "Oh, I'm better than you," or "I got more skill than you," or "I could do this better than you," or. You say, "Oh, I'm holier than you," and that's all bad. As you say, it's like smoking uh, God's nostrils. It's not good to say that to one another. You say it's pride and arrogance. It's one of the seven things that the Lord hates. Um, is pride, and um, and so now we um now we do this, um, and when mass amounts of people do this, keep the commandments and abide in Christ, um, the evil one is far off. He's even unseen and unheard. Because when, when, when someone's doing well, the devil's nowhere near. Because, he, you know what I'm saying? Because God's with those people who are doing good. God's abiding, you know what I'm saying? God's dwelling among his people when uh, those who do good are doing good. Um, even though persecutions do arise for the word of God, God still blesses us in everything we do. Um, he gives us happiness, spiritual happiness. Um, so, in the book of James, chapter 4, verse 7, it says... Um, or verse six, he says, "But he gives uh, more grace. Uh, he gives he, uh, he gives more grace. Therefore, he says, God resists the proud and gives uh, grace to the humble. Now, humility, being humble, cures worldliness." Ch uh, James chapter four, verse seven. Therefore, submit to God. Resist the devil, and he will flee from you. How do you resist the devil? Keep the commandments. Repent. Submit to God. Pray three times a day. Do what pleases God, love one another, and the devil will flee. He won't. He can't. Have, he has no power. He has no power over those who are doing good, because the goodness overcomes the uh, wickedness, and then the wickedness is far off, is is unseen, unheard. You can't even say no destruction comes upon those who are doing good. Also, in uh, in, in Jeremiah chapter twenty nine verse seven, it says, "I have plans for you, plans for you to prosper, not to harm you. Thoughts of peace towards you." Basically, is what the Lord says. The Lord doesn't want to harm you. He didn't create you for the fire. He created you for himself as a peculiar people that he may inherit. And so that he wants for himself. So therefore, uh, do what is right. Um, seek peace, uh, love goodness, seek peace and pursue it. Um, and uh, Jesus said, Bless are, uh, blessed are the peacemakers for they shall be called children of God. So be at peace with one another. 
Um, do not let pride and arrogance get to one another. If someone sins against you, remember, it, sin does happen sometimes. Um, if one sins, remember how Peter said to uh, ask Jesus, he said, Lord, if my uh, brother sins against me uh, seven times, shall I forgive him all seven times? Uh, Jesus said, um, Jesus said, uh, if your brother, he said, uh, don't just forgive him seven times, but if he comes up to you and repents, uh, forgive him up to 700, uh, 700, uh, 77 times, seven times. I mean, forgive him at all times. Um, like I was saying in, a, in another video, don't go throwing stones at those who sin right away. You say, don't go throw st stones at those who sin, period. Because we're trying to bring people into salvation. Jesus said, I have not come to destroy, but to save. Um, he said, I have not come to destroy the law and the prophets, but to, uh, fulfill. God didn't, he's saying, Jesus didn't come to, um, when the two disciples were like, should we call it down far from heaven and, uh, devour our enemy? He said, he said, do, you do not know what manner of spirit you are speaking of. He said, I have not come to destroy, but to, uh, save. To seek that which, uh, seek that which was lost, that it may be found. Basically, Jesus is after the lost sheep. He's a, a good shepherd, and he doesn't want people to perish. He doesn't come, remember about the tower, they, they were, uh, they were like, um, he said, Jesus asked his disciples, he said, you think that um, these people, because they were sinners, the, the, the tower fell on them? He said, uh, actually, or the disciples asked Jesus, is it because these people were sinners that the tower fell uh, The tower fell on them and they perished? He said, no, but if you don't repent, you will likewise perish, meaning uh, you will be destroyed if you don't repent. Things happen for God's purpose. Um, now, submitting yourself to God can be an immediate process. When you come to your knees and you repent, that's good, okay? God's going to show you mercy. He has he's plans for your future. When you repent, you might still be being punished for something that you did wrong. But he'll make it come to pass if you repent and you're sincere and you, you repent and you're showing God that you love him by keeping the commandments, preaching his word, bringing people to salvation, and bringing people to Christ, then God's going to show you more mercy. He's gonna, you're going to find major favor with the Lord. Um, so now, um, exercising the commands, let us start off with the Ten, okay? We're going to start off with the Ten Commandments. The Ten Commandments is uh, a basic guideline for, um, there's two great commandments, okay? Love the Lord your God. The first and greatest commandment is to love the Lord thy God with all your heart, soul, mind, and strength. The second is love your neighbor as yourself. And on these two, all the rest of the uh, commandments hang. But we're going to go over um, the Ten Commandments that you may have an idea of what good morals are. Righteousness. Now, what righteousness is, is, righteousness is a, uh, righteousness is obtaining and abiding in moral principles now now we know what's good and we know what's bad okay to kill is bad do not kill okay um so let's go over this and God spoke all these words saying I'm the Lord your God who brought you out of the land of Egypt out of the house of bondage um you shall have no other gods before me you shall not make for yourself a carved image any likeness of anything that is in heaven above or that is in the earth beneath or that is in the water under the earth you shall not bow uh, you shall not bow down to them nor serve them for I the Lord your God am a jealous God visiting the iniquity of the fathers upon the children of the third and fourth generation of those who hate me but showing mercy to thousands who love me and keep my commandments now we we just God just said uh, he said basically I'm gonna show mercy and bless uh, thousands that love me and keep my commandments. The next one is you shall not take the name of the Lord your God in vain, for the Lord will not hold him guiltless who takes his name in vain. Now, if if someone uses God's name in vain, it's gonna cause someone to blaspheme, and it's basically it's saying it's just gonna be like oh whatever, and, and so do not do it. Do not use God's name in vain. Remember the Sabbath day to keep it holy. Six days you shall labor and shall do all your work. But the seventh day is the Sabbath of the Lord your God. In it you shall do no work. You nor your son nor your daughter nor your male servant nor your female servant nor your cattle nor your, sh nor your stranger who is within your gates. For in six days the Lord made the heavens and the earth the sea and all that is in them and rest the seventh day. Therefore the Lord blessed the Sabbath day and hallowed it. Okay, now, the Sabbath day is from Friday evening to Saturday evening. That's, um, that's the actual Sabbath, okay? Um, it talks about, uh, the scripture talks about uh, there, there's one who tries to change laws and times. 
Okay, um, now think about the Pope. They try to, uh, they try to make the, uh, Sunday the, uh, the Sabbath day, but nowhere in the, in the Bible did God ever say, I'm going to change the Sabbath day. Um, remember Jesus died on a Friday, and he, and he basically he, was, he rose the third day on a Sunday. Friday, Saturday, Sunday, he rose the third day. Um, God didn't, he didn't rise up on Saturday because God did, did, did no work on Saturday, but on the third day he rose again. Um, now, um, to love one another and to uh, do the work of the Lord, uh, if you're doing the work of the Lord on the Sabbath day, it's okay. Because what you're doing is you're doing the work of the Lord. You're keeping it holy. You're uh, preaching the word. Okay, You're not doing like uh, man, man's work. But it's okay for you to do the Lord's work, to preach the gospel, to love one another, and uh, to do such things, and to uh, help one another out. It's okay. Um, now, the next commandment is, Honor your father and your mother, that your days may be long upon the land which the Lord your God is giving you. Now, when you, when you honor your father and your mother, look, they've been around longer than you have, okay? They're your father and your mother. They've been around longer than you have, and they can. They when they, when someone else looks at somebody else's life and what's going on in their life, they can pinpoint and see what's what's really going on with that person. What needs to change? So honor your father and your mother, because they don't. Your 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 mother and your father. Your your father and your mother can do uh, really. Your father and your mother, they they have that that parental love for you. Okay, they love you because that you came from them. And it, it's like that. The love cannot be diminished, nor can it be extinguished, because it's it's. it's you, they've known you since you were an infant. They love you. That you're saying, even though there's certain things that happen, um, your father and your mother care for you. So honor them and respect them and listen to their commands and basically do what they say. Um, listen, be obedient to your parents. Um, they're not going to lead you in a bad way. Um, you shall not murder. You shall not commit adultery. You shall not steal. You shall not bear false witness against your neighbor. You shall not convey your neighbor's house, nor shall you convey your neighbor's wife, nor his male servant, nor his female servant, nor his ox, nor his donkey, or anything that is your neighbor's. So, um, greed is not good. Okay, greed is and lust is not good. Um, be control yourself. Have obedience. Okay, um, you can control yourself. Okay, it's not. It's I mean, it's not hard to control yourself. I mean, don't be like a wild animal going out there like a, a, ra a ravening, a ra a, a, a rav uh, don't go out there like a ravening wolf or like a, a you am saying like a, a beast just straight up, like not being able to control yourself, you know what I'm saying, having, do not commit all kinds of sexual morality. It's not good. Control yourself. Love yourself. You're, you're, you're saying you're the temple of the Holy Spirit. You're saying, let God, because in the scripture says, uh, Paul said, therefore, make yourself holy and living sacrifices, do and acceptable and pleasing in the sight of God. Meaning, keep the commandments, do what's right, accept Jesus, pray three times a day, have it, have a relationship with Jesus Christ, and He will dwell in you. In, 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 um, how do we know that Christ dwells in us? By our actions and our words, okay? When we, when, when we uh, start doing what is right and keep the commandments of the Lord and start speaking on Jesus and what Jesus said, you know that Christ is abiding in because you're being Christ-like. Um, now, in a, now, let's get a description of love. Okay, We're going to go to a description of love. What is love like? Okay, um, 1 Corinthians chapter 13, verse 4 through 8. Okay, now, um... Love suffers long and is kind. Love does not envy. Love does not parade itself. It is not puffed up. Love does not uh, behave itself rudely. Does not seek its own. Is not provoked. Thinks no evil. Does not rejoice in iniquity, but rejoices in the truth. Bears all things. Believes all things. Hopes all things. Endures all things. Love never fails. So now, love suffers long and is kind. Even in doing, even in practicing doing what is right, we um. It, we may suffer still, um, and love is kind. Remember, remember Christ. Remember his passion. Remember what he did. Even though he did all the right, and he's he saying is the innocent for the guilty. 
And um, and and even though Christ did not deserve what happened to him, he he uh he did it that that way me uh we may have salvation. Um, he didn't deserve that. He didn't deserve being beaten, scourged, and killed because he never broke commandment. He never sinned. All he did was love. But that the love it was even uh, manifested and even more exalted in his sacrifice, laying his life down and taking it back up again for his friend's sake, um, that we may have eternal life with him after doing all that was right. That's the greatest love of all. Um, and so now, um, love does not behave rudely. Okay, it's not. It's not rude. You know what I'm saying, if someone cuts at you, remember Jesus said, "Bless those that curse you. Do good to those that hate you. Pray for those which spitefully use you and persecute you." And uh, basically, when you're saying, "Blessed are you when men shall revile you, persecute you, cast out your name as evil, all for the Son of Man's sake. For exceedingly great is your reward in the kingdom of heaven." So jump, leap for joy, sing praises to the Lord, because great is your reward in the kingdom of heaven. All right. So now. Um, Love does not rejoice in iniquity. Um, okay, so like if someone comes up to me and says, "Oh look, what I got! I got all this uh, stuff that I just stole!" Right? You're not. Don't rejoice in that. Love does not rejoice in iniquity. Okay, love does not rejoice when something evil is done. But if you rebuke a wise man, he will love you. If you rebuke a fool, he will hate you. Um, therefore, but love rejoices in the truth, though. So if someone steals something, they come up to you and they're like, "Oh man, I just stole this. I feel heck of bad." You know, or you're saying, I just, uh, if someone comes up to me and they're like, Jacob, you know, I did this to you in the past times and I'm sorry, um, I'm going to be like, hallelujah. You're saying, I'm, I'm like, it's okay. I'm just going to say, I forgive you. I forgive you. You're saying, who am I to hold anything against you? I'm not perfect. I've sinned. And so, therefore, I'm not going to hold anything against you because, you're saying, I just want, I want to be forgiven too. So, I'm going to just forgive you no matter what you're saying. Basically, what you, whatever you do, I'm going to forgive you. I'm not going to go and hurt you or harm you or anything like that. Even though I may not want to be around you for a little while. Because what you did, you know, what I'm saying, and I don't know if I could trust you, but I'll forgive you. I'll forgive you, and I'll let you saying, I'll let you uh, basically try to uh, earn my trust back. You know, what I'm saying, I'll, I will talk and stuff like that, and see see where it goes from there. Um, but I will, I do forgive. And so, anyways, so but rejoices in the truth, bears all things. Okay, so now that means if someone sins against you and all this stuff, you're gonna bear through it. Okay, like let's say. Uh, let's say I have a wife, right? My wife goes and she cheats on me, right? And she commits adultery, and she comes up to me. I'm gonna bear that, and especially, I'm gonna bear that. I'm gonna say, look, if she repents to me, and she says I'm sorry. I'm, I'm gonna say I forgive you. I'm not gonna say here's a bill of divorcement because what did Jesus say about the bill of divorcement? He says Moses gave you the bill of divorcement because of the hardness of your hearts. So I'm not gonna sit there and say I divorce you, but I'm like, baby, I forgive you. Hey, hey. Yeah. Um, anyways, so, um, but love believes all things, hopes all things, and endures all things. No matter what you're going through, you, if you endure, you know, love endures, and love never fails. We know that Christ doesn't fail, God never fails, and God is love, and He comes through. He comes through all the time. He always comes through. He never fails. He's faithful to His Word. He's faithful, you know what I'm saying, completely faithful and true. Um, now... Um, in Matthew chapter 6, verse 33, Matthew chapter 6, verse 33. Now Christ said, um, But seek ye first the kingdom of God and his righteousness, and all these things will be added to you. Clothing, food, shelter, um, family members, I'm saying extended life, um, all, thing, all good things will be added to you. Um, eternal life, um, you'll have, you're saying you'll receive many spiritual gifts and blessings, spiritual happiness, um, blessings from, uh, blessings in heaven, you're saying, uh, blessings on earth. Um, I mean provision. I'm talking about provision, abundant. You'll have it more abundantly. Um, all these things and righteousness is, is obtaining a moral standard and practicing moral standards. Okay. Um, 
Now, okay, there's a blessings in um in Deuteronomy 28. Even though we're not under the law, we're saved by grace, not by works. Um, but by by the grace of God through Christ. Um, but if we practice the commandments, we still receive the blessing. He's very merciful because the law is not made void. It's not void. God forbid. Um. So now, this is a blessing on obedience. Moses wrote this. He said in chapter 28 of Deuteronomy, he says, Now it shall come to pass, if you diligently obey the voice of the Lord your God, to observe carefully all His commandments, which I command you this uh, today, that the Lord your God will set you high above all nations of the earth, uh, and all these blessings shall come upon you and overtake you, because you obey the voice of the Lord your God. And uh, Moses wrote, he, says, um, he said, I'm going to go over this real quick, the blessings. Um, blessed shall you be in the city, and blessed shall you be in the country. Blessed shall the, uh, be the fruit of your body, and produce of your, uh, the produce of your ground, and an increase of your herds, and an increase of your cattle, and the offspring of your flocks. Blessed shall uh, you be your bla uh, blessed shall be your basket and your kneading bowl. Blessed shall you be when you come in. Blessed shall you be when you go out. And the Lord will cause your enemies who rise against you to be defeated before your face. They shall come out against you one way and flee before you seven ways. The Lord will uh, command blessing uh, on you in your storehouses and all which you set your hand. Uh, and he will bless you in the land which the Lord your God has given you. Remember you said whatever you sow you shall reap. That means literally whatever you in sowing the word of God. In people hearing it you shall reap that. Whatever you sow in your good ground like seeds, literal seeds like cucumber seeds and tomato seeds and corn and wheat and all stuff you shall read whatever you sow and um, whatever you put your hand to whatever work you do you, you're saying your work is not in vain in the Lord the Lord is a reward to those who do good I'm going to get more into that um, the Lord will establish you as a holy people to himself just as he uh, has sworn to you if you keep the commandments of the Lord your God and walk in his ways and all peoples of the earth shall see that you are called by the name of the Lord, and they shall be afraid of you, because you shall be because we were very prosperous. If we keep the commandments of the Lord, we, we come up in abundance, massive amounts, and we do so good. And everybody, you're saying they get scared because the wicked perish. The wicked, you're saying wicked slay the wicked. You're saying and um, wicked slay the wicked. It, it just happens. It, you're saying so if you do good, everybody's abiding in love. We become a strong chain which cannot be broken. A, a chain, a chain of freedom from sin. A chain of uh, love, unity, bondage, and righteousness. Not bondage of sin, but bondage and righteousness. Um, and uh, so, and the Lord will grant you plenty of goods in the fruit of your body, and in the increase of your, li your livestock, and in the produce of, the, of your ground, and in the land which the Lord swore to your fathers to give you. Now, when it says uh, the fruit of your body, okay, let's we we, we can break this down spiritually, and uh, we can break this down uh, in the fruit of your body means children. The fruit of your body when you have children, let's say if you're married and you're saying you have a, you have a wife and you decide to have children, her womb shall be plentiful. You're saying her, her womb shall uh, she shall bear many children, and your children if you raise them up in the commandments, you you everything you do is going to be blessed. They're 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 saying so many blessings are just gonna pour out every, everywhere, and it's just so good, and it's just like it's, it's worth it's worth it, it's worth it keeping the uh, commit. Trust me, um, committing adultery is not worth it. Do not commit adultery because is busting a nut worth uh, risking your life? No, it's such it's such such a uh, such a brief period of uh, pleasure for such a big penalty. You know what I'm saying? Um, so it's good to get married and have a wife and have kids and, and stuff like that. Because in the book of Isaiah, God said, the Lord said, I did not say to the seed of Jacob, Seek ye me in vain. I, the Lord, speak righteousness. I declare things that are right. I, I did not create the earth in vain. Or he's like, I did not say to the seed of Jacob, Seek ye me in vain. I created the earth to be inhabited. God wants people for himself. God desires life. He loves people. He even gave his only begotten son that there may be people that... There may be people, and that people may uh, be with him in love and be like his son. That's all he wants. He just wants people for himself. He created all the holy angels in heaven. He just wants life, and he wants to just bless everybody. That's all God wants. He just wants to give and give and give and give. 
and that's all God wants to do is give and give, and He just, he just wants to He just wants you to partake in His goodness through the Son. He wants you to take, partake in, in the Son's sacrifice and just all the goodness which comes forth from God. God wants nothing but good for you. God is extremely desirable, and and He just wants everything good for you. Um, the Lord will uh, open to you His good treasure, the heavens to give uh, give. The rain of uh, to your land in its season, and bless all the work of your hands. You shall lend to many nations, but you shall not borrow. I mean, you shall have enough. You shall be so prosperous that you're able to lend, or um, that you uh, you can lend to many nations and not even have to worry about it. Like you just be like, all right, whatever. We still got plenty. Saying we got more than we need. You know what I'm saying? I mean, you had like so much, or you'll have. You're saying you'll have, you'll be sufficient. You'll have uh, enough, and the Lord will make you. At, the head and not the tail, and he'll make you the leader, not the follower. You shall uh, be above only and not be beneath. You shall not. You shall be ruler and not the. Uh, I'm saying you shall not be the. Uh, you shall be the ruler and not the, the servants. Um, but at the same time, you're going to be being the servants because you're going to be. Um, you said whoever wants to be a leader, basically great among you, shall be your servant. But uh, by being the servant, you become the leader, and by being the leader. You, uh, you, I'm saying you're a leader over those who you're helping. Um, if you heed the commands of the Lord your God, which I command you today, and are careful to observe them, so you shall not, uh, so, uh, so you shall not turn aside from any of the words which I command you this day, to the right or to the left, to go after other gods to serve them. So those are the blessings of the Lord. I'm gonna get more into the blessings. Um, now Jesus said, um, he said in uh, Matthew six nineteen. In Matthew uh, chapter uh, six nineteen, he says. Do not lay up for yourself treasures on earth, where moth and rust do corrupt, and thieves break in and steal. But lay up for yourself treasures in heaven, where neither moth nor rust destroys, and where thieves do not break in and steal. For wherever you find your treasure, there's going to be heart also. Now, by the by doing the works of God, repenting, coming into Christ, learning what uh, the kingdom of God is all about, and it's about righteousness, it's about love, it's about Jesus, it's about loving one another, it's about doing what's right. And um, that's basically what the kingdom of God is about, just doing right. The kingdom of God comes from within. It does not come with observation. It comes from within. Um, but the actions, you know what I'm saying? Uh, faith without works is dead. I'm going to get more into that, though. So, now, all the blessings that you receive on the earth by practicing the commandments and um, doing what is right and uh, trusting in the Lord, uh, Jesus is Lord. And once you accept Jesus and you can, uh, you know what I'm saying, and you start keeping the commandments and stuff like that, um, as soon as you accept Jesus into your heart, you're born of the Spirit, okay? You're baptized. You're baptized by the Spirit, okay? And... People, um, baptism is an, is an outward expression of commitment to the Lord. Um, but once you accept Jesus Christ, you're automatically baptized in the Spirit. You uh, you receive Jesus. You receive the gift of the Holy Ghost, and Jesus is right there. He's like, oh, I heard you. You said to me, heck yeah, I'm with you too. You know what I'm saying it's like you accept me. You know what I'm saying you shall rise up with me, basically. You know, you shall you shall, you shall walk with me. Um, now, so the um. The things that you get on earth, you can use to lay up for yourself treasures in heaven. I'm trying to tell you, do not lay up for yourself treasures on earth, but which the stuff that you get on earth, you can use to lay up for yourself treasures in heaven, where your treasure will never disappear. Because um, the stuff that we get on earth is temporary, but we can use it to lay up permanent treasures in heaven. Um, Jesus said in Acts uh, 20 verse 3, He said, it's more, basically it's more blessed to give than it is to receive. Because think about it, when you give somebody, when you give something to somebody, they get to enjoy it, and it's, it's more blessed to give because you get to see them enjoy it. You get to experience the love. You know what I'm saying because you love them when you get to, you're like, yeah, you get to feel good. You know what I'm saying because you did something good, and you get to help somebody out, and that's a great reward. Being able to give some, something to somebody, it's more blessed to give than it is to receive, um, and and that's just how it is. Um, God loves a joyful giver. And uh, also, you now blessings, okay? Um, another commandment is you're supposed to tithe one tenth of whatever you get a year. So now, in the book of Malachi, there's a promise from the Lord.
God makes t he made a lot of, he made all a whole bunch of promises. God is faithful to his promises. Okay, Malachi, which means God's messenger. Chapter 3, verse 10. Bring all the tithes into the storehouse, that there may be food in my house. He said, And try me now in this. This is what it Now try me now in this, says the Lord of hosts. If I will not open for you the windows of heaven, and pour out for you such blessing, that there uh, will not be room enough to receive it. Basically, if you tithe one tenth of whatever you I'm saying get, you're helping out the sheep, you're helping out the Lord's people, you're helping out your family uh, by spirit, you're saying a spiritual family, you're helping your family out in Christ, and what happens in this is the Lord's going to bless you, He's going to pour out, He's just going to pour out blessings from heaven, because all things are possible for God. Now, all things are possible for men, but whatever is impossible for men is possible for God. God can just pour out blessings, all of a sudden someone will show up at your, your house with a million dollars in a suitcase, or you're saying they just pull up with a truck full of food, or you're saying, oh, here's a new house, man, you can have it, just, you're saying, just totally pass by, not even just like, and just not even care, you know, it's just like, it'll just come to pass. Like, he's like, dang, this is it's just so much blessing that you won't be able to receive. So, the same day, I think, if you just tithe one-tenth of whatever you get, let's say you're getting Social Security, right? You're getting, like, what, $900 a month? So, you tithe $100 a month, right? And all of a sudden, you're, you're going to, someone's going to say, okay, I'm just going to give you this house for free. You're saying, you're tithing one-tenth, we'll give you the house for free. Oh, yeah, there's a new car over there, you can have that. Yeah, you need some food, man, we'll give you some food. You're saying, all of a sudden, like, crowds of people are just bringing you all kinds of stuff because, you're saying, you took care of the Lord's sheep. And so those who have an abundance, you're saying they'll be able to give to you. And so, um, Lord, just bless you. Um, also, Jesus said in Luke chapter 6, verse 38. He said, um, Give, and it will be given to you. Good measure, pressed down, shaken together and running over will be put into your bosom for with the same measure that you use it will be measured back to you so that means just whatever you give you shall receive back basically and um so it's good it's good to give um and you have more abundance it's basically um also um faith without works is dead okay works um we're not saved by works okay so we're not saved by works but by the grace of god now why okay now why don't we say by works because works are um keeping the commandments and we've all sinned and fall short of the glory of God and breaking the commandments so therefore we uh you know what I'm saying we've all sinned so we're not saved by works we're saved by grace but faith without works is dead so if you do not work you know what I'm saying if you say oh I have faith and I believe and I trust in Jesus and Jesus gave you a commandment love one another as I have loved you She's kept all the commandments, so he wants us to love one another as he loved us. And the works are working of the law, but also there's works of preaching the gospel, doing stuff like this. But the works, um, the works of God is to do good to one another. Also, the work of God is to believe in whom He sent. Jesus said, "Now this is the work of God to believe in on whom He sent." He's speaking, basically, uh, Jesus is saying, "If you believe in Me, basically, that's the work of God." Because once you believe in Christ. You taste of the heavenly gift, and once you taste of the heavenly gift, you want more of it. You're saying you receive of the heavenly gift, and it's so good you don't ever want to lose it. So you're going to start loving and doing everything that's good and right and just. And when you do these things, you just continue to do good. And that's why Jesus said, simply, if you read one verse, let's say someone reads that one verse. Jesus Christ said, He who believes, uh, basically, Jesus said, Whoever, uh, this is the work of God, believe uh, in Him who got, in Him who God sent. When you believe in Christ and you believe, you start reading the scriptures. You start getting a better understanding. You start wanting. You start working all the stuff in the Bible, and you start doing what's right and just. Because when you start doing these things, once you believe in Christ, you know what's right and you know it's good, and you know you just all, all you want to do is just serve the Lord. Um, now Hebrews eleven, chapter six. Now, um, so Leviticus chapter six, um, but without faith it is impossible to please him. For, uh, for he who comes to God must believe that he is, and that he is a rewarder of those who diligently seek him. We walk by faith and not by sight. So therefore, all the stuff that I'm saying and all the good that 
that uh, you know what I'm saying that I attempt to do and try to do, and uh, I'm doing all this by faith in God, and I trust. You know I'm saying I trust and believe that me doing good, I'm going to receive good, and I'm going to receive a reward, and you're know saying that, that I'm going to have eternal life, and that I have eternal life. I believe that I have eternal life. That's why I do all this stuff, and I just like I just do it because God's so good, and the goodness of God led me into repentance. I repented, and all I want to do is serve Him and just have other people feel how I feel. I want everybody to feel how I feel. And as, I've, as I receive from Jesus, that's what I want to give to everybody because it's such a good feeling. There's no feeling like it. I mean, that's all I want to do is just, I want everybody to experience the goodness of God and to just always live in the goodness of God. That's just basically it. Um, now, um, so in Matthew uh, chapter 6, verse 33, it says, Seek ye first the kingdom of God and his righteousness, and all things will be added to you. And all these things, clothing, food, shelter, all things, um, salvation, uh, comfort, you know what I'm saying all these things. The definition of righteousness is to uh, basically practicing moral principles, or you know what I'm saying keeping perfect, uh, having perfect. You know, basically, having uh, the definition of righteousness is, is adhering to moral principles. Now, Leviticus 19. There's okay, um, more uh, moral moral law. Um, Basically, do not have sex with any close kindred of your blood. Okay, do not have any close. Uh, do not have sex with anybody who's like immediate family. Because that's immoral. Moral, moral, and um, moral and ceremonial laws, uh, and this is Leviticus 19. And the Lord spoke to Moses, saying, "Speak to all the congregation of the children of Israel, and say to them, You shall be holy, for I, the Lord your God, am holy. Every one of you shall revere his uh, revere his mother." And his father, I mean, reverence your father and your mother, um, basically means to respect um, his father, his mother, and his father, and keep my Sabbaths. I am the Lord your God. Do not turn to idols, nor make for yourselves molten gods. I am the Lord your God. Um, and if you offer a sacrifice of peace offering to the Lord, you shall offer it of your own free will. It shall be eaten the same day. You shall offer it on the next day. Oh, so we shall offer it, and on the next day, and if any remains until the third day, it shall be burned in the fire. Verse 7, and if it is eaten at all on the third day, it is abomination. But let's continue over to the, uh, the other stuff, because there's no more need for um, sacrifice for sins. Um, and there, everyone who eats shall bear, uh, hold on, we're going to go to verse 9. When you reap the harvest of your land, you shall not hold wholly, wholly, you shall not wholly reap the corners of your field. You shall uh, not gather the gleanings of your harvest. Verse 10. And you shall not glean your vineyard, nor shall you gather every grape of your vineyard. You shall leave them for the poor and the stranger. I am the Lord your God. Um, you shall not steal, you sh nor uh, you shall not steal, nor deal falsely, nor lie to one another, and you shall not swear by my name falsely, nor shall you profane the name of your God. I am the Lord. You shall not cheat your neighbor, nor rob him. The wages of him who is hired shall not remain with you all night until morning. As a big mistake of the United States of America, they wait seven. You got to work a week or two weeks to get paid. Right here in, in the law of the Lord, it says, "You shall not cheat your neighbor, nor rob him." The wages of him who is hired shall not remain with you all night until morning. That means you're supposed to get day, every day when you're done working, you're supposed to get paid. Um, and that's a big thing. Imagine how much there's so much sin in the world, basically that that um, God hates. You know what I'm saying? When you work, you're supposed to get paid that very night. So you go to work in the morning, you're supposed to get paid that night, so you can feed your family. I'm saying uh, that way you can uh, do with what you need, so it, just, it makes it so much more easy and less confusing. But uh, I'm saying, just... 
You shall not curse the deaf, nor put a stumbling block before the blind, but you shall, uh, but shall, hold on, it says, you shall not curse the deaf, nor put a stumbling block before the blind, but shall fear your God, I am the Lord. Now, what is the fear of the Lord, someone may ask? The fear of the Lord is to hate evil. Um, it's in Proverbs. You shall, uh, you shall do no injustice in judgment. You shall not be partial to the poor, nor honor the person of the mighty in righteousness you shall judge your neighbor I mean, just because someone is rich or just because someone is poor don't show um, don't show uh, basically do not show any favoritism in, um, in judgment but judge your neighbor righteously and show no partiality I mean, I'm saying uh, you can show mercy but just because the person is poor or rich that doesn't mean because they're rich show them mercy more than the poor person because they're rich. You're saying if the person's rich. Don't show them more per, uh, more mercy because they're rich. And if the if the poor person's uh, poor, don't show them more mercy because they're poor. Just judge judge your neighbor righteously. Um. You shall not go about as a talebearer among your people, nor shall you take a stand against the life of your neighbor. I am the Lord. You shall not hate your brother in your heart. You shall surely rebuke your neighbor. And not bear sin because of him, you shall not. Uh, you shall not take vengeance, nor bear any grudge against the children of your people. But you shall love your neighbor as yourself. I am the Lord. You shall keep my statutes. You shall not let your livestock breed with another kind. You shall uh, not sow your field with mixed seed, nor shall a garment of uh, mixed linen and wool come upon you. Uh, whoever lies carnally with a woman who is betrothed to a man as a concubine and who has not at all been redeemed nor given her freedom, for this there shall be a scourging, but they shall not be put to death because she was not free. Um, he shall, uh, yeah, so basically, it also continues on. Um, when you come into the land and have planted all kinds of trees for food, then you shall count their fruit as uncircumcised. Three years it shall be as uncircumcised to you. So let's say I bring seeds from Israel, I bring it to America, or I bring America seeds to Israel. Um, basically, I gotta let uh, you, you have to let it three years. You have to wait for the harvest three years. Um, you shall not eat it for three years after you plant a tree. You gotta wait for three years of harvest, and then the fourth year, um, the fourth year it shall be uh, holy. It praise the Lord, and in the fifth year you may eat of its fruit. So when you plant a tree, let's say I bring seeds from over America to Israel, I plant. I gotta wait uh, three years. I cannot eat it. The harvest has to throw it all away, and then the um, the fourth year is a praise to the Lord. And then the fifth year I can eat it. Um, so that's what you're supposed to do. And um, I'm the Lord. Drew, uh, basically says, and in the fifth year you may eat eat its fruit, that it may yield to you its increase. I'm the Lord your God. God does this for a reason. He just lets it, this is how He wants it to be. In the fifth year, and from the rest of the time, if you wait, you shall have it in abundance. Um. It may yield to you as increase. Um, you shall not eat anything with the blood, nor shall you practice divination or soothsaying. You shall not shave around the sides of your head, nor shall you disfigure the edges of your beard. You shall not make any cuttings in your flesh for the dead, nor tattoo any marks on you. I am the Lord. Do not prostitute your daughter to see, uh, cause her to uh, be a harlot, lest the land fall into harlotry and the land become full of wickedness. You shall keep my Sabbaths and reverence my sanctuary. I am the Lord. Give no regard to mediums and familiar spirits. Do not seek after them to be defiled by them. I am the Lord your God. You shall rise up before the gray-headed and honor the presence of an old man and fear your God. I am the Lord, and if a stranger dwells with you in your land, you shall not mistreat him. The stranger who dwells among you shall uh, be to you as one born among you, and you shall love him as yourself. For you were strangers in the land of Egypt. I am the Lord your God. 
You shall do no injustice in judgment, in measure of length, weight, or volume. You shall have an honest. You shall have honest scales, honest weights, an honest ifa, and an honest hen. I am the Lord your God, who brought you out of the land of Egypt. Therefore, you shall observe all my statutes and all my judgments and perform them. I am the Lord. Those are good morals, okay? So if you do those things, do what it says to do, and uh, don't do uh, do what it says to do. If it says don't do something, don't do it. Now, um, now you can say uh, basically in uh, the the epistle, the first epistle of John, right? First epistle of John, chapter three. First Epistle of John, chapter 3, verse 18 and 19. Um, chapter 3, verse 18. It says, um, my little children, let us not love in word or in tongue, but in deed and in truth. Meaning, um, if you love somebody, show them that you love them. Instead of saying, I love you, just do it and show them. Show them you love them by just loving them and doing good to them. That's when over the commandments, you know what, you know, you now you have an idea of what right is and what wrong is. So now, uh, just do the commandments and love one another. Just accept Jesus Christ. If you haven't accepted Jesus Christ, just say, Lord Jesus, I accept you into my heart. Um, I accept your sacrifice on the cross, Lord. Just come in, uh, teach me your word. Um, help me get to know you better, uh, to know you. Lord, uh, put my trust in you. Um, Lord, I just pray that, uh, I just, Lord, I believe that you died and rose again. And, uh, Lord, I just believe, I believe in you in all things that you have done. And, uh, Lord, just help me get to know your word better. In Jesus' name, amen. So I gotta say, and then you you baptize with the spirit, okay? Um, anyways, uh, YouTube this video, so, uh, I'm gonna close it up for now. I'm going over the Book of Revelation. If you guys want to check it out, I'm going over all the uh, the the chapters in the um, in the uh, commentary. Also, I just wanted to go over this stuff real quick and uh, do a quick sermon. Uh, anyways, thank you for listening, YouTube. Jacob Serb.